Hello, everyone, and welcome to Classical Piano Workshop with your host, Tony Winston. Hello. Today, we're going to work on Fantasy Impromptu by Chopin. Three ways to practice this piece. The right hand, the left hand, and hands together, and a lot of things to cover here, so fasten your seatbelts. Uh, let's start with the left hand. So, now some of you may know this already, that I did injure my left hand pretty badly back in the fifth grade, so I have, I'm missing a muscle over here, so, so my technique is not the best, but I will attempt to demonstrate this. Um, what you wanna do, is follow the fingering. Uh, you know, using four and sometimes three there. And the other thing too is to bring the bottom note up this way so that you focus the sound on that bottom note. Then it's back down again, up here. And sometimes you can bring out the top note a little bit there too. Um, but I think you can notice that the bottom note comes through a little bit more clearly. And that's par partly a result of the way I'm moving my arm. So follow the fingering. I'm using Josephi's uh, uh, edition here, and uh, the fingering's very good. There are some difficult jumps with the left hand, and I learned a new trick from a very experienced piano teacher recently. Like for instance here, you have to go all the way down to this A flat here from this one. Here's a good trick. Aim for your thumb being right here, and then it's just an octave. So you don't actually play that note, but maybe you could just for practice. Like that, you see. And then, if you just kind of, you know, don't look way down there for that low, um, I guess it's a G sharp, isn't it? Yeah, don't look way down there for that low G sharp. Just kind of aim for this one, and then let the pinky go down instead. Okay, and of course, just, you know, practicing sometimes with your eyes closed. So you can, yes, that was with my eyes closed. So you can, you know, start to um, figure out, you know, just how far of a jump it is and get used to how far you have to move your arm. Okay, that's going to do it for the left hand for now. Uh, let's take a look at the right hand. Now, I, I don't do his fingering. He starts with thumb. And then goes three, one, three, two. I just start with two. Put the four up here. Then go to three, two, three, two. That's the way I do it. And I don't think I use my four in there either, but. That fingering works for me. You can try out some other fingerings, but let me show you something that I think will help you play this, this opening line. As you approach this note, be a little low and come up for this one. And do a little bit of a crescendo there towards the end of this line. Okay, here comes a tough one. Rush the end. Let's do this without pedal. If you can, connect this note to that note. All right, and then get your fingers set real quickly. If you jump, well, it breaks the line for one thing. It, it, you know, the music says it's all under one phrase, so, um, but it will really help to connect that note. All right, now it goes through a lot of twists and turns on the way back down. So a good way to practice is to do it with stops, and I'm gonna show you about five different ways to do this. So let's start right here, and I'll stop on this note, 
And then every four notes, like, you know, the, the, the um, little, what they call crotchets, uh, the little groups of four notes that are barred, 16th notes. So I'm going to stop on the first one. Like that. And you can do this with the metronome, too. So you, you, you play on the click, then you wait for one click to go by, and then you start right after that. Oops, shouldn't have played that last note. Then try it by stopping on the second note. Now see. Yeah, that note is tied there at the very end, so I'm probably releasing it a little too soon. Then stop on the third note. Let's see. Then stop on the fourth note, and this one's a pretty helpful one right here. Do each one of these, uh, you know, many times. And you can set the metronome a little bit faster so that you're actually playing pretty quickly. And, of course, you can do it on any other line, too. I just find that it's most helpful to do it on the most difficult lines. Like this one. For those of you who watch my uh, jazz videos, you know, that's a great jazz line. Yeah, you can use that all over the place, um, especially anytime you hit a G-flat minor chord. Okay, um, more right hand here. We get to the second section, the B section. At first, the melody is here in the, in the thumb. So you want to hit that one a little bit harder, and that's not hard to do since your thumb is a nice strong finger. Now, I don't recommend holding the note down like this because you're going to be using the pedal, and you want to get this rotational thing going on with your right hand. Let's see. Right there is a really hard one to reach. And, you know, I used to just really struggle a lot with this section. And, I mean, I still do, really. Um, but right here, especially if you have small hands, this rotation really helps. Let's see, what am I doing here? And then the music gets softer, and the accent goes now on the top note. So now the rotation will really help. And the uh, one thing you want to do is try to keep your thumb soft so, so that high note does come out. Because it's pretty easy to keep banging your thumb away there. together. Now, this piece is a rhythmic challenge. You've got three in the left hand, four in the right. You know, you're doing triplets in the left hand and uh, four notes in the right hand. 
So I used to you know, practice the rhythm here just one way, more or less focused on the four rather than the three. Um, but I've found that if you do it two different ways here, kind of emphasizing one hand or the other, that you can really get a better grasp on this rhythm. So let's do it the way I always did it first, which is four against three, the lowest common denominator, the LCD for you math fans, would be 12. So we have to count um, 12 beats here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And there I'm emphasizing the groups of four by counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now this is a kind of a recent discovery of mine, but it's very helpful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because if you think about it, the left hand is really the timekeeper here. You know, it's it's in the bass. So one, two. Now. You know, this rhythm goes extremely fast, so you can count it out as fast as humanly possible. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And it's still not really fast enough um, for how the piece actually goes. However, by practicing slowly and doing this counting and count it out loud, you will get the feel of this rhythm much better than if you just kind of randomly try to do it. I mean, yes, you can do it without counting. You know, that way. Um, but try counting it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, <laughs> it's hard to do, um, but it's worth doing. And just do it for a couple of measures. Um, and then as you keep playing, that, that rhythm will tick off in your head. So you do have to practice this slowly to get the idea of the rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, I know what you're thinking that, you know, there's no way that's going to help you when you're going really fast, you know, when you put this piece together. But yes, it will. Take my word for it. Trust me. Okay, now, when you put hands together, there are other considerations. For instance, you're trying to do this circular motion here with the left hand. And at the same time, you're kind of coming up here almost at the same time. See, there's that little lift right there in the middle of the measure. So you start off lifting here on the left hand. And then it's kind of, you kind of lift on both of them there, right in the middle. Then when we get to the B section, it gets even trickier because the right hand is going, doing this circular motion, but the left hand, the motion is, is like half as, uh, it, it, it's, it's slower by half. You're going on. is going and you know it, the first up is here and then the right hand plays it on the on the second uh, 16th note though so it's not exactly together it's like this one and then this one so I'm 
I'm trying to exaggerate a little bit. And, you know, when you see a concert pianist play this, you don't really see this. It may not even be happening for everybody. You know, I'm not saying that uh, this is the only way to possibly play this piece. But this is how I was taught. <laughs> So getting the choreography there, very difficult. But if you go slow and think about it, it will become natural over time. And one thing I have uh, was corrected on several times was the fact that, you know, when I bring this hand up, sometimes I, I'm already up when I play that note. I kind of go like that. And you really you want to bring it up as you're playing it. See, that time I was already up. Kind of hard to do with the microphone in your way, but. Okay, so there's kind of a a rough demonstration of, of how to do it. And you know, you can't go too fast when you're learning to do this choreography with your arms. So, you know, do a lot of slow practicing on this piece and it will really pay off. Uh, just a little bit about the middle section. thing I was never taught when I was a, a you know a young piano player was you know to shape phrases and lift your arm up off the keyboard and it has the effect of altering the timing of the piece just slightly so when you lift your arm and then come down on an, on a beginning of a new phrase you'll usually be just a, a slight oh a millisecond or two late which adds to the you know the emotional content of the music so like right here you and then a new phrase even though it sounds like it could be part of the same phrase um, you know Mo uh, Mozart Chopin often will do some kind of unusual phrasing kind of end the phrase a little early and start the next one a little early or the or or late and uh, it makes for some very nice effects so started that new phrase as I started that new phrase it was just a tiny bit late and you know the the gestures of your arm help that to happen it's not just showing off and making it look pretty and all and, and you know that kind of thing it really has a musical effect so um, try to incorporate that when you're practicing uh, the uh, the middle section well for all you aspiring classical pianists out there I hope this video has been helpful and if you have comments or questions please leave them down there in the uh, comment section and uh, if I see them I'll try to respond thanks so much and I appreciate all my new patreon subscribers uh, I've had a little trouble getting the patreon system to work but this month I finally got a few bucks out of them so it's working pretty well I hope everybody's happy with the channel and uh, you know please feel free to leave comments and suggestions and uh, now that I think everything is working I'll be doing uh, uh, some videos on a pretty regular basis uh, this month of November and next month as well. So thank you again and see you soon.